Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you will continue continue to enjoy um, your meal. I did want to thank one of our outstanding programs here who put on this uh, buffet this morning. So appreciate Chef Penix and Chef Walls and the BHS culinary team. So if you can help me give them a shout out. Thank you guys so much. At this time, we're gonna have two of our uh, coaches come up and, and give you a little background on the um, Athletic Hall of Fame. And we'll start with Coach Mack and then I believe Coach Wartman's right after you. Well, once again, today is a very exciting day for all of us at Blackman High School, especially those of us who've been in involved in athletics here at Blackman. Today is a continuation of a dream come true and one that has been many years in the making. In the beginning, we wondered if something like this might ever happen or if we would ever be successful enough to celebrate our athletic programs. And as you can tell in this, uh, in this lobby area by the trophies and the things that have gone on, some, some pretty big dreams have come true for Blackman High School. Last year, the school celebrated its 20th anniversary and it seemed like the appropriate time to put in place this Athletic Hall of Fame. Now, as we look ahead at the next 20 years, we look around and see much of the success that our players, coaches, administrators, and student body have enabled us to enjoy. The athletic leadership team began putting these plans into place several years ago, and at this time, we would like to recognize the members of the athletic leadership team, if you would please stand. Remain standing, please. If you would remain standing. And we would also like to recognize the members of the Hall of Fame Induction Committee who are here with us as well. Now I want to introduce to you Coach Barry Workman, who will share the athletic mission and vision. Thanks, Coach. On your tables, you'll find a copy of the vision and mission of Blackman High School Athletics. I would like to share that with you. <coughs> vision, we will become a school of choice in the Southeast for all student athletes because of the teachers and coaches who strive to be transformational and purpose driven. Our mission, we will consistently cultivate high character, competitive student athletes. Our core values, we seek to do what is best for the student athlete in every decision. We take pride in presentation of our teams and facilities. We engage community through caring service. We honor our alumni for excellence, both past and present. We preserve tradition while pursuing innovations to promote success and safety. We benefit from the successes of others in academics and in sports. We believe that students out, can outperform expectations in the classroom, the field, and floor with hard work, desire, strong coaching, and teaching. The vision of the Hall of Fame was to create a venue in which we could honor student athletes across all sports programs. The Hall of Fame's committee's goal was to honor the elite of our student athletes. Our criteria was highly valued on own field and on court success, as well as sportsmanship, citizenship, and contributions to our community. You can go online and access our nomination forms and view our criteria. We have also left some copies of the nomination forms at the front entrance. Now I'd like to introduce our athletic director, Mr. Scott Wallace, who will oversee the introduction of these four new inductees into the Blackman High School Athletic Hall of Fame. At this time, I'd like to welcome to the podium Mr. Lonnie Thompson, who will be introducing his son, Darius Thompson. Uh, following his introduction, we will hear a video acceptance uh, from Darius, who was unable to attend uh, this morning because he's playing professional basketball. 
in Italy. So uh, at this time, Mr. Lonnie Thompson. Uh, good morning. If I sound a little nervous, I am nervous. I should put the Darius on. He's online right now, sitting there looking at me. I should turn that phone around and let him do this. But anyway, uh, on behalf of my family, my kids, grandkids, daughter-in-law, we'd like to thank Blackman, Principal Justin, uh, the Hall of Fame committee, Coach Wharton, for selecting Darius to the Hall of Fame. Uh, Coach, I want to recognize you right away. I'd like to personally thank you for putting the trust and confidence in Darius at a young age. You know, he had basketball in his blood, but I remember the day when you got hired here, and I don't know if you remember, I came on and told you, I said, Darius will be playing at Blackman. He had thought about transferring, but I told Darius this would be the best fit for you because you had coached at a collegiate level that you could prepare him for the next level. So again, I'd like to thank you for putting that trust and confidence in Darius. And also, I'd like to, uh, I guess, <coughs> help your ego a little more. Back here about two years ago, Darius and I were traveling to uh, Chicago for his first NBA workout. And I asked Darius, you know, you, you guys know Darius played in three different places. He played in uh, SEC, ACC, then came back in the Conference USA, played for probably Hall of Fame coaches. I said, Darius, uh, you played for a lot of coaches. Who do you think was the best coach for you? And coach, not taking anything away from you, but it is shocking. You know, I just assumed, you know, these guys, at the SEC level, AC level, ACC level, making millions of dollars a year. And he said, Coach Wharton. And I'm like, wow, that kind of shocked me. But I just want to let you know that he really respects you as a coach. And I think you've done a great job, like I said, preparing Darius for the next level. The thing about Darius, when Darius was growing up, my wife and I, if we wanted to get him a gift or something for Christmas, if it didn't bounce, he had nothing to do with it. So, Basketball had been in his blood from day one. When I was coaching at Montlow back here in 98 through 2002, Darius was around about five years old, right, Coach? I was breaking the tape down, and some of the coaches in here know that VHS. I had one tape taken out, put it into another VCR. And I was showing our game film of my team, and Darius was sitting on a little crater right beside me. And uh, he said, Daddy, that player should have done this and that. And I'm like, I said, what? I made him repeat it again. I'm like, why? He could tell me at the age of three, I think maybe five years old, what that player should have done. And my college player probably couldn't even tell me that. And I told my wife, and I said, no, I don't know if Derek's going to be a basketball player, but he's going to definitely have the mind of a basketball player. So like I said, it's been in his blood his whole life. Basketball has really been good to Gary, and still been good to him. He's overseas now. Looking back on his day that Blackman started his middle school and over at the high school, the ninth grade year, sophomore year through senior year, Darius has averaged 25 wins a year. And he leave here, he go on to college, start out in Tennessee, first year played in Sweet 16, transferred to Virginia, sit out, played in the Elite Eight, the next year made it to the second round to the NCAA tournament. Transferred to West Kentucky, then took them to the NIT Final Four. So basketball has been really great for years. Then he go overseas his first year as a pro. The team uh, win the championship, he named most outstanding player, had another great year. His second year as a pro at, uh, in Italy last year, before the virus broke out, out of, of 17 teams, his team was in the top four, had the chance to compete for another championship. So. Basketball has really been good for Darius, but you know, there was a moment last year, I think his team went on like four or five losses. And he called me and he, he didn't know what to do, because I don't think he'd ever lost four or five games in a row. And I was trying to help him through it, but at the same time, I was smiling on the inside. I said, it's about time to figure out what it feel like to be on the other side. <laughs> but my last four or five years of coaching, I, Darius was winning 100 games his last four years, and I was losing 100 games, so, but I, I thought, it was great for him to experience that because high school, college, he never experienced losing. And coaches in here know that that's just part of it. It makes you appreciate the winning side a lot more. But again, uh, Principal Jefferson, the Hall of Fame committee and coach, I'd like to thank you guys for selecting Darius to the Hall of Fame. Thank you. Hall of Fame class. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not there to be there with you all in 
and celebrate and accept this award. But thankfully, my parents are there on my behalf. Um, when I got the call from Coach Borkman in the summer, I was extremely excited to know that I was going down in the history books at Latin. Uh Looking back now, I don't, I don't think I would be where I am today without my time as a, a student athlete at Blackman. Um, thinking back now to the, all the memories, it, it gave me flashbacks to um, all the championships we won, the first time in school history, making it to the state tournament, and all the things, all the lessons I learned as my time as an athlete there. Um, me and my teammates were lucky enough to, to learn from Coach Morgan and the staff to approach every day like it was our last. Every practice, we went as hard as we could, and he got the best out of us. And luckily, uh, Coach developed us to further our career and further our education after high school, so we're very thankful for this opportunity. Um, one of the big life lessons that I still use today is had Coach taught us to be humble, appreciative, and thankful. And I don't think I could be more humble more appreciative or more thankful for what the basketball program at Black has done for me. Um, today, I'm lucky enough to, to be in my third season as a professional athlete, and I'm here in Italy. I uh, met my beautiful wife, and we have a, a baby on the way. And I have to give credit to the Black Men basketball program because it allowed me to be where I am today. I want to say thank you to, to all my teammates that were there with me every day from freshman year to senior year, battling out all the coaches I've had to help prepare me for all the levels I've been played at, luckily enough to play at. I also want to say thank you to my, to my mom, my dad, and all my family for being there through me through this whole time. Even to today, they travel all, all across the world to watch me play basketball. For the sports program, I also want to say thank you. Thank you for creating this, this Hall of Fame. Not only for honoring me and former athletes and coaches on our accomplishments, but also for the current athletes for giving them uh, inspiration uh, to motivate them on what they can also achieve. I'm extremely proud to be a Blaze alumni. I'm always there to support, and I wish nothing but continued success. Go Blaze. Uh, hello everyone, it's Derek Thompson here. I'm going to start by saying thank you to the selection committee for picking me to be a part of this year's Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you uh, one of our 2021 inductees in the Blackman High School Hall of Fame, Mr. Darius Thompson, accepting Mr. Lonnie Thompson. <laughs> Next, I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Mike Levi, who will be introducing Kenny Merritt. I want to thank you for this opportunity to be able to introduce this young man. Um, he's something else, that's all I can say. He had an unusual life to start out with. I'm going to go into it a little bit show you what Kenny has uh, gone beyond. Kenny's got a beautiful wife with two kids. They got, uh, they live in St. Louis and uh, he's doing well. And we all want to appreciate everybody that has anything to do with putting Kenny on the wall up here because he needs to be here. Let me tell you, he's special. Uh, I was introduced to Kenny his freshman year uh, by another fine wrestler that we had on the team. Kenny had tried out for basketball and didn't make the cut. So Aaron, the boy that you introduced him, told him to try to find the wrestling and come out and, and compete for the wrestling team. After I saw and talk to Kenny, I knew that this was his sport. I even sent uh, the 
story is that I even sent the coach of the basketball team a dozen red roses and told him that if he had anybody else that he cuts as the partial for Kenny, bring him up. We'll say. Right after that, Kenny came to me and we talked to him a little bit, or I talked to him. I had no, uh, didn't have any assistant coaches at that time. I ended up with one of the best in the state, uh, Ham up here. He's Ham to us. But uh, he, he was great. I mean, he's, he's a fine young man, and we just so happened to luck into him later. Right after uh, Kenny started coming in to practice a little bit, his mother was having a very, very hard time. And so she thought it best for them to move to Atlanta. <clears throat> so Kenny, one day at practice or one day after school or something, I don't remember if I remember him going to Atlanta, but no Kenny. And so I said, Sal Jones, you know, uh, this, this is not going to be really good. Well, he stayed there for about three weeks, right, Kenny? Yeah. And, and uh, he begged his mother. They prayed together. She was very, very, she had a Bible all the time. She was very religious. They prayed together. Kenny kept saying, I want to go back to black. That's where I want to go. And I had already talked to him about if Kenny's any problems. I said, you just come and live with us. Uh, my wife and I, my wife at that time was Nancy Levi. And uh, so that was what was going on. And she said, no, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. We're going to Atlanta. So Kenny talked to his mother, and in about three weeks, he popped back up. There's Kenny. And I kind of kid around with him. I said, where have you been? You missed practice. <laughs> and he said, and this is what Floyd right here. Uh, I told him, so you know. <laughs> Sorry. They were living out of their car. Mother, brother, and Kenny. They had no home. They were living out of their car, and the car ran out of gas, so they couldn't get to school. I said, no more of that. Said, we'll take care of that. So uh, Kenny started coming to practice then, and we found a place uh, that Kenny could live, and finally Kenny came into our household. And uh, mother seemed to seemed to uh, be okay with it, and it was it was fine. But uh, there at first it was kind of rough. So Kenny, <laughs> the first first match, I remember that. So fun. Uh, he didn't know anything. I mean, we just about had about a week of practice, and so. Uh, I think it was Brentwood Academy, Brentwood, I don't know what it was, but uh, Kenny was wrestling, we were doing fine and everything, and well, Kenny, you can't make me Kenny man, you would not want to make Kenny man, well, he was a man, well, he just picked the dude up and threw him, well, you can't do that in wrestling, <laughs> Kenny, you can't throw him off the mat. And he was so apologetic. Oh, coach, I what about now? I said, shut up. <laughs> I said, and then I used a few explicit notices there, and I said, forget about it. I said, all this will come around. Took the guy out, man. And so, uh, he, he was upset by himself. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And uh, then he started to bloom. Uh, his junior year, he was 36, 36 and three, something. I don't know. It was, he had lost a couple. And he got into, the, uh, into one of his matches. Well, it was the finals. 
It was really the finals. And uh, co uh, referees, if you, I, I, I doubt if you know much about wrestling, I understand that, but referees do not, it's so just a rule, you don't, referees don't make the call that wins the match. Well, guess what? We were in Chattanooga, we were wrestling a Chattanooga person, it was a Chattanooga referee. Ten seconds left in the third period. It was all tied up, all tied up. And the referee called stalling. Ten seconds. To bring Kenny. Well, you can't do much in ten seconds. So Kenny lost. He came in second his junior year. His senior year was different. Nobody touched him. Several people wouldn't even want to wrestle. Uh, one of the coaches bounced to one of his uh, his regular one that would wrestle with that weight. They moved him up a weight class. Well, what I did, I just moved Kenny up a weight class. And so <laughs> we went around and around on that a couple of times, but that was really funny. But uh, he's he's special. I mean, he's just absolutely special, and this is a great honor for him. One more quick story. It's absolutely hilarious. A lot of stories. Uh, he got a full scholarship at Central Oklahoma <coughs> in wrestling. So John, my son, which is also this time starting to help him to uh, uh, help me coaching, he and Ham and myself, Mo, we had we had a good good coaching staff. And uh, Kenny was in the back seat. We were driving down the road. Here we were in Oklahoma, and Kenny turns to me. And he said, why are all the signs in, uh, with Indian names? <laughs> we were in Oklahoma. <laughs> I said, Kenny, you got to remember where you're going here. here in Oklahoma. They're all Indian names, all the streams and all the roads and everything. But that's what his response was. <laughs> why are they all Indian? And I said, oh, my Lord. <laughs> the only thing here we got busted, I guess, at the house was he would not take the garbage out. <laughs> Why? I have no earth out here. But he wouldn't take the garbage out. So that's Kenny's life in a nutshell. Uh, two wonderful kids right now with a beautiful wife. He's doing well. But uh, that's about all I have to say. I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm glad that I was part of his life. Thank you. teachers and <laughs> staff that uh, were very expecting of me with regards to my academics and making sure that I did the things that I could do. And the support was always there. And I, I didn't realize the level of, you know, of the, of the It Takes a Village um, that I was receiving. I mean, I had very, very clear help with, with my dad, <laughs> Coach Levi, and I had uh, very clear support with you know the coaching staff with you know Hambone, Coach Matt, and all of the all the coaches that were involved. But I didn't realize that you know all of the you know additional teachers, the the, the Miss Meadows, the Miss the Miss Morgan boys, the you know Miss Millsaps, those are all science teachers. Now that I think about it, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Smith, like all these people that are you know silently and loudly rooting for you and 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 you know preparing you to be successful. Um, 
So we go through, you know, these this at, these athletic seasons and we're fighting for for the wins and trying to find people to wrestle and we're we're putting the, the whole the whole idea. The funny part about this is that we were able to make the Hall of Fame. I remember talking to Coach Levi. I think it was my what year was that? It was my my sophomore year. And I asked him. I said he was he was putting together a schedule. And I was like, so what, who are we gonna wrestle? And he said, I don't know. We're just gonna find people that will beat you. And I was like, are you trying to get me beat? He's like, heck yeah, I'm trying to get you beat. <laughs> if I don't get you, if I don't get you beat, then I haven't done my job. And and, and that was our silent competition. He was trying to get me beat, and I was gonna prove him wrong. And I had help. I had I had Hambo come in and and wrestle me until they kicked us out of the, this little foyer. We didn't have a wrestling room, so. Uh, we had to put all our mats out here over Christmas break, and Levi would let us in, and me and him both wrestled for about six hours for one takedown. Total <laughs> <laughs> sweat. Total sweat. And, and whoever scored had to give the, per the other person the opportunity to say rematch, which meant that we got to wrestle for six hours. And uh, and that's how we did it. We just we just kept on going, and it's. It's just crazy. I, I came in today or today, yesterday, and my friends from high school called me, and they started talking about bringing up all the stuff that we used to do in high school. And I am just amazed at the experience that I was able to have. And I thank you guys for being able to provide that, and being able to, like you said, provide something like this Hall of Fame that'll give the kids that are in the situation that I was in an opportunity to say, "Hey, I'm gonna do something different." You know, that's. Necessary. It's the thing that allowed me to be able to pass. Oh, <laughs> well. <laughs> it's the thing that allowed me to be able to, you know, get to Oklahoma, graduate, and meet my wife, and then have the kids that I was able to have. Is because I had those opportunities and those people supported me to be able to get there. I didn't do it on my own. Chris Berry. Following the introduction, we will hear a video acceptance uh, from Chris, who was unable to attend this morning because of his duties at the University of Colorado. Good morning. So, uh, kind of a reoccurring theme. Uh, Elaine and I were, were very grateful and honored that Blackman High School uh, takes the time and the effort to put an event on like this to, to not forget the history of the school and recognize the the past athletes and add them to this this wall. You know, when we came in this morning, <clears throat> it's it's very emotional uh, to see your kids 
up there being recognized like that. And, you know, I told Chris in our phone conversations leading up to the event, I, I, really, I really think it's, it's a bigger deal for us than it is for you. I said, because, you know, as a parent, what an honor to say that your child was recognized at this level at high school. So it's, it's, it's really an, an awesome thing for uh, Blackman High School and just the entire uh, school system with Rutherford County. It's, it's really a solid program. So I, I think I can say, yeah, I, we hate that Chris isn't here, you know. We wish Chris lived in Murfreesboro, but he doesn't. You know, he lives out in Colorado, him and his wife, they have two children, uh, just having a wonderful life. But I kind of want to hammer on what Kenny was just talking about. And it's something that I think Chris realized and embraced very early in his life. And it was something that Elaine and I certainly uh, try to teach the boys is you won't live life on your own. Uh, you'll always have family, but you'll always have people to support you. And if you, if you know that and embrace it, uh, life will uh, really be exciting for you. Because, you know, it, Elaine and I, we, we look back at Chris's coaches uh, in his uh, athletic career. You know, uh, early on was Coach Whited, and then he had uh, Coach Patton during the high school years. And uh, we're very honored that his running mentor, uh, Josh Carroll, was able to come here this morning. Uh, Josh, Josh was a, a great influence for Chris. Uh, uh, athletically and spiritually uh, during high school and and we'll always be grateful for that but the coaches the coaches what what a tough job you teach and then you coach you know you got two different two totally different careers but it's 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 an awesome thing for the kids uh, the things that the, the coaches do for them and instill in them. And then when Chris graduated from Blackman High School, he had another great coach, Bill Gautier at UT Chattanooga. And Chris had a phenomenal uh, academic and athletic experience at UT Chattanooga. It also changed his life because his wife, uh, was on a girls track and cross country team. So they met at UTC and man, man, what a love story. So they, they've got two beautiful children, a uh, girl and a boy, and, and they are, they're, they're living a wonderful life. But to this day, even uh, Chris knows and he's instilling that same value in his kids about uh, the people around you. What a positive thing that can be for you and in your life. So I do want to share one quick story and then I'll wrap it up. Uh, every athlete and every parent that had a student that was an athlete has either one meet, one game, one play that they always remember. Coach Levi called out one, just like that. So for us, I'm not speaking for Chris, but for the parents, you know, it was Chris's senior year, 2007, at the state meet. If you go back a few weeks before that, Chris had ran uh, in regionals and won. Everything was going great. He got a stress fracture. 
and it was going to be doubtful if he could compete in the state meet. But Chris, being Chris, he had to try. So uh, he goes out, he lines up, takes off right up front where he was expected to be, but things didn't end the way Chris wanted them to. Stress fracture gave way on him, and uh, he, he wasn't able to compete, to complete the race uh, as competitively as he wanted to, but he did complete the race. Uh, he had to walk, but he finished the race. It was a gosh awful time, I can't remember the number, but anyway, he did cross that finish line. But the cool thing about that event uh, was Josh, it started out as Josh and the, the other guys on the team. When they crossed the finish line, Josh being the leader he is, he circles back on the course to find Chris and starts walking with him. Well, the other runners came right behind. Well, when the runners from the other schools saw what was going on, it really showed how much respect and admiration that the other runners had for Chris because they piled in behind him. It, it, was, it was unbelievable. It was an unbelievable sight to see uh, that type of uh, sportsmanship and caring for another player on an opposing team. So, you know, that's just, that's just one of the, the memories that, that Elaine and I reflect on and talk about from time to time, especially leading up to this event. We've, you know, we've, we went through it with Josh again this morning to make sure some timers wasn't sitting in on us, to make sure we were remembering it, how it really happened. But uh, I, I can tell you, uh, talking to Chris several times in the last couple of weeks about this, he's, he's very honored. Uh, I took pictures of the wall and sent to him this morning. And uh, I know he'll be excited to, to get the award. And I know he's really excited about the, the recognition. But again, we're, we're honored and, and really appreciate it. And we'll let Chris take it away. Thank you. Chris Perry, I sincerely apologize that my family and I cannot be there in person. I really wanted my wife and kids to come.
um, you know, year after year through high school and college, that I would learn to develop this, these, these characteristics that really led me to be the person I am today. So I'm so thankful for that and those, and those years at Blackburn and the people that I had around me uh, and really being a part of a team that was in its infancy at the time that really helped lead me uh, into the position that I'm in now and you know, having the, the life that I'm thankful for uh, professionally and with my, my family and my kids. I'd like to thank a couple people specifically. Uh, Coach Nikki Patton, um, although she's no longer a black woman, she was extremely supportive as a cross country and distance track coach during my time there. Uh, it was her that really started taking us seriously as a team and understood what it took to fully support us and to get us what we needed, um, you know, whether it was uniforms, the right needs, et cetera, et cetera, uh, to allow us to be competitive in our sport. I would also like to thank Josh Carroll. Josh Carroll was a volunteer assistant coach when I was at Blackman. He ultimately left Murfreesboro, but still continued to volunteer uh, from a distance. And it was Josh who, who handled the more technical side of our team and helped write uh, training plans and support me uh, with, with training and embracing um, you know, strategies and techniques and etc. And it was with Josh that I really found a lot for the sport and really deepened my understanding of what it took to be a competitive runner. So I'd really like to thank both of you for all that you met during my time at Blackman. And finally, I'd like to thank the two people that are most important for my running career. Uh, my mom, my stepdad, Elaine and Sean, who you just met. You guys, I'm so thankful for everything that you did uh, for me when I was at Platinum, and of course beyond. Uh, but it was during those formative years that you guys were just so supportive. And I, and I really learned a lot, not only um, from you guys as a kid, but also just what it meant to be a supportive parent. You guys never pushed me out the door to go for a run. You never told me I needed to do this or that different or train harder or yada yada. It was always just a display of support. You were there for every single event, no matter what, how you had to rearrange your work schedule or what you had to do. You made sacrifices to organize a class event for us or, or take weekend trips out of town uh, to compete. And I didn't realize at the time just the number of sacrifices you guys had to make, but I am so thankful and so appreciative of what you did through those years that ultimately let me be successful and help me uh, to this day. I love you guys, and I want to thank you. Uh, to the general audience, I just want to again say that I'm sorry I can't be there. I really uh, appreciate this event and all that you guys are doing to support Black and Athletics. Thank you, and go for it. Next, I'd like to welcome to the podium uh, Coach Shelby Campbell, who will be introducing our final inductee, Coach Chad Dibbett. First, I just want to start off and thank Dr. Justice and Mr. Lawless um, and Coach Mack for putting on just like a first class event for Lightning High School for the players and the coaches who have. Um, you know, help build the black man culture athletically. I think this is an amazing thing. Um, Dr. Justice always knows how to do everything first class, um, so this is amazing. Um, but as he said, my name is uh, Shelby Campbell. I am a Black Man Lady Blaze alumni. I played here from 2007 to 2010. Um, and I've been given the honor to introduce one of my former coaches who I've considered one of the best coaches I've ever played for. Um, but before I get to that, let me share about him and his coaching career. He's a Rutherford County native who played collegiate basketball at Martin Methodist in Pulaski, Tennessee. He began his coaching career here in the county, coaching middle school boys and girls, 
for five years. Then he spent one year coaching boys at Seattle and finally transitioned to call Black Moon Blaze home for 10 years. During his 10 years, during his 10 years, he won two state championships back to back during the 2014 and 15 seasons, going 66 and three overall. Wow. The 2014 team was named national champions by USA Today, Max Preps, and ESPN. During his time here at Blackman, he collected many accolades, such as a 2014 Nate Smith National Coach of the Year, 2015 National High School Coaches Association Coach of the Year, along with, in 2015, he was named Pat Summit Trophy Finalist. He was also the AF Bridges TSSAA Coach of the Year, and he was a three-time 7 AAA Coach of the Year. He recorded 199 wins with only 98 losses during his time here at Blackman. He had 15 players go on to play collegiate, collegiate basketball, along with many of those players that you know or have heard of. Um, following his stint here at Blackman High School, he spent one year at Truett McConnell, helping rebuild a girls program before taking his current position at Trebek and Nazarene, where he's beginning his fifth season. Now that I've read all of that, you're probably like, wow, what an incredible coach. But that's not why I personally consider him one of the best. He knows his X and O's, and you can, tell by, you can tell that by all his accomplishments and being coach of the year like, way many times by way many people. But he's the best because of the relationship he built with his players on and off the court. And his heart for Christ. And he shared that relentlessly with his players. As a coach now, that is something that I value, which is why I work to develop relationships with my players. He taught me that it's way more than basketball. He will forever be a mentor to me. But should I can't look at you while I'm crying. You can't do this. <laughs> he will forever be a mentor to me. So, Coach Hidden, it was an honor for me to play for you. And I'm blessed to introduce you for this well-deserving honor of being inducted into the Hall of Fame, all of, all of fame here at Blackman High School. Everyone, please help me welcome Coach Chad Hidden. <laughs> Shelby, uh, and it is, it, it's a gamut of emotions um, just to reflect back on relationships. Um, the banners and, and awards and accolades um, are, are, are special, they really are, uh, because it's about the relationships that you've had uh, and you grew into uh, through those moments. Um, Shelby said it very well that you guys have, have done an amazing job of uh, putting this on and so many people going to that, um, and, and we're thankful for this uh, for this opportunity uh, to go back down memory lane. Um, and as I made two statements to Mr. Lawless when he gave me the call and uh, said this uh, uh, award was going to be uh, presented this fall, I said, well, two things. Uh, number one, all right, I'm old enough to be in the Hall of Fame. Uh, I'm not sure I like that part of it, but. Uh, um, and then the second thing is, you know, this is not a, a Chad Hidden Hall of Fame. This is a Blaine Blaine Hall of Fame. Um, because through the 10 year journey, we had a lot, a lot of adversity. We had a lot of uh, highs and lows and ups and downs. But what we had uh, was we had trust. Uh, we had trust, we had connection, and we had community. Um, super thankful for uh, the assistant coaches. Um, that, that believed in me, believed in our mission, believed in our journey, uh, believed in persevering through uh, struggles, uh, believed in not settling for the, the successes and the triumphs. Um, families, uh, I tell everybody, you know, tell me about Black and I say we just had the most amazing families. Um, yes, we weren't perfect and we had some issues and we had some times, uh, but it was a Lady Blaze family. It was, it was a it was a culture built on uh, on trust and honesty uh, and commitment. And my, my family, um, just huge, huge, my wife, my kids, and you guys have seen them growing up now when they were just babies here. Uh, my mom and my brother, my dad, who's, who's seen us down from heaven. Um, just all of those memories for 10 years to look back on a few things that we have uh, and we talked about the, that community and that unity and the trust and relationships. But what we had 
as a group and as a program was integrity. Uh, we had a bunch of group of young women uh, that, that were high character, high integrity, high work ethic, and when they didn't have it, I demanded it. Um, you know, and, and, and they trusted the process, they trusted the journey, they trusted uh, the mission uh, of, of being successful. And what we always, always just talk about is, is habits. Uh, just constantly having the habits of a champion. We talk about being built like a champion in order to do that. When we first got here, um, you know, we didn't have the most talented, talented group. Uh, but I said that we were going to present ourselves like a champion. We were going to work like a champion. We were going to act like a champion. We were going to uh, schedule champions to compete against to see what that looked like and how can we become that. Uh, and just along the way, it was that commitment and investment they had. And I, I've always said this when people ask about success. And for us, it was adding value to others. And that was as much as uh, my family uh, adding value back to me to be able to do what I do. Uh, our assistant coaches adding value to our team and back to me uh, so that we can be successful. Uh, the players adding value to me as a coach so I can listen to them and, and, and hear them and, and, and figure out how can we do things the right way, how can we think, do things better, always analyzing, just of, of, of adding value back to each other. Um, and so as we constantly did that, things just constantly started to improve. I'll tell you a few little stories uh, that, that we can kind of share to take us down memory lane, what it looks like. Uh, we had a young lady named Blake Brown who was, I think at first she was probably our most talented player early. Um, and there was a scenario we got in and, and Blake Brown said, we're doing all this and we're doing it the right way and maybe everybody else in the county or around aren't doing it necessarily somewhat the right way because we, we know some of the things that obviously you know, go on and do things. And, and I told our, our family, families and, and, and meetings and, and uh, you know, uh, parent meetings and, and, and just uh, events that we had, you know, let's don't sell ourselves short. Let's just do the right thing all the time. And Blake came in one day just emotional and said, what if it doesn't get turned around? And I don't think this was year two, maybe. And I said, Blake, I don't know when it will get turned around, but I know if we honor Christ, he was a, a, a person of faith and a lot of young women uh, that, that were strong in their faith. And uh, I said, if we honor Christ in what we do, we just keep doing this, it will get turned around. And I told her, I said, I don't know if, um, if, 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 if when that's going to happen. And Blake, I don't know if, if you will be a part of that. I, I don't know when that success is going to turn and we're going to win a bunch of basketball games. So fast forward, Blake, from senior year, decided to focus on volleyball, really good player both. We, um, we were playing, we were the four seed, playing the one seed um, uh, at Lawrence County. This was our first trip. We I went 10 years in Shelby Mason the two championships, but the other two state tournaments were uh, as important as those two championships were uh, because we, we, we did make it two other years. And that first trip was, we were the four seed, and we had a young, young lady named LaDonna Bailey, not a starter, not a score. Uh, she wasn't she's not able to be here. Uh, but LaDonna, after practice every day, would shoot short corner shots. And I'm thinking to myself, she might be wasting her time uh, because we're not drawing anything up for LaDonna Bailey. I mean, the hard worker, great, great young lady, defense, rebounding, hustle play, the glue type players that you need on your team. Well, me being the smart coach that I am, I'm drawing a play up. We're down one, I think, uh, at Lawrence County for Shelby County. Leading scorer, best player, okay? Um, Shelby being Shelby and knowing what we do, they triple team her, and LaDonna's into the game because I think we had somebody foul out, maybe. Uh, and there's LaDonna Bailey down in the short corner where she just constantly did what she did. She just put in the work. And she persevered, she was ready, she was prepared. So they triple Shelby, Shelby goes into the corner. LaDonna hits a, a short corner shot, not right at the buzzer, but like four or five seconds, they have to heat one up from half court, and we win. And then we, we propel, and we go from a fourth place team in our district to making the state tournament because of the people. Because Shelby knew that she was supposed to do what was best and what was right in the moment. She passed it to LaDonna. LaDonna knew that she was always supposed to be prepared, 
always be prepared. We always talk about being prepared for that moment. Uh, she was very, very prepared for that moment. And then when we won a state championship, uh, a lot of young ladies that made that first two state tournament teams weren't, at, weren't on the court for that first state championship game, but they were there with us after. And that's what I told them, I said, you're always going to be a piece of this. You're always going to be a part uh, of this journey, of this success, because you've invested and you've committed yourself to doing things the right way, right way constantly uh, striving to improve, constantly striving to be better. And I can visualize us winning that state championship, but I can also visualize the community of current, the, the players that play in the game, plus their families, plus the Shelby Campbells, the Connor Wheelers, the Katie Smith, all of those players that came and were there uh, and were supporting them and cheering for them. And that's kind of that legacy. And this is what this really means uh, for me to be there uh, as the leader. Uh, but it was lateral leadership. Uh, it was lateral leadership because of the young women and the families uh, that we had in, that, in, in the program there for 10 years so that we could always collectively say that we're all uh, laying place. Uh, we're all a part of, of this process, all a part of this journey. Uh, and this is just another memory and opportunity for us to, to share that, um, this accolade, this, this, this Hall of Fame induction. And when you see uh, my name up there, it, it has a tagline of so many uh, assistant coaches, so many players, and so many families uh, that we, we decided early uh, that we were going to stay connected and stay committed to, committed to something greater than self. Uh, I'm a firm believer that uh, if we are committed to something greater than self, uh, then that's how we can go from being a brand new school with uh, little to no tradition and then uh, leading up to the success that we've had. Uh, I would also like to thank um, uh, Miss Vic for giving a young, young, as I saw some of these pictures up here, I'm like, wow, it didn't seem that long ago, but I, I, I see the, the age difference. Uh, a young kid, uh, really, uh, with just a dream and a passion to coach and influence and, 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 and make a difference. And uh, her and, and her staff and uh, all the people, all the coaches, all my colleagues um, that were here uh, that allowed me to, uh, uh, to make mistakes, uh, allowed uh, support me through that, allow us to um, you know, do things um, you know, outside the box, such as traveling to Naples, Florida and Phoenix and you know, all those different things that we gave experience to. And that was my dream. My dream was not to be a champion. It was a dream uh, to provide an awesome experience, a, a unique experience uh, for our young ladies. Uh, and uh, I, I hope we did that and, and I share this with each and every one of you. Thank you. I do want my family to come up. Now, Leia and the kids, please come up.
as we close, uh, I just want to say thank you to everyone who came and attended, so many that traveled, made arrangements, made sacrifices. Uh, thank you so much for coming and being part of this. Uh, we're honored to recognize excellence, and, and we do recognize this as excellence, and it needs to be recognized and preserved and, and also give our current student athletes something to strive for. So thank you so much for being a part of it. Uh, we appreciate you being here. Thank you. We are dismissed. Enjoy your day.